guy is accused of an awful lot in terms oh, of his business interests. Doesn't. What? He's never, he's never killed anybody. He's never killed oh, anyone. He's never... <laughs> oh, that's, it's fine then. That's fine. That's yeah. <laughs> the fuck? That's the only thing you should go to jail for is killing people. Everything else is fine. So on Thursday, Donald Trump was indicted, which means he's going to be arrested. He will be charged. And I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at how people reacted to this over here in Britain on The Jeremy Vine Show. For those of you that don't know, The Jeremy Vine Show is a radio program on BBC Radio 2. It runs for two hours a day, five days a week. It's a news and politics show. They cover the top stories and they have experts come on and give their opinions. And then they open it up to the phone lines, to the great British public to get their thoughts on news stories. And it can be pretty entertaining. Before we go on, I feel it is worth noting, for those that don't know, don't live in Britain, that the BBC is funded by the public and therefore they cannot be seen to be leaning either way politically. They have to be impartial. They have to be bipartisan. And they have very strict rules and guidelines on how they report news and how presenters conduct themselves. So this isn't like Fox News or... or NBC, where it's all right wing or all left wing. This is straight down the middle. Now, some people claim that the the BBC is too woke and too liberal, but then others claim it's too conservative. You just can't win. But for what it's worth, I think it's a pretty decent news organization in terms of just getting the facts as opposed to someone's opinion. Anyway, we're going to look at, or listen to rather, uh, Friday's episode. Donald Trump has become the first former US president in history to face criminal charges after he was indicted by a grand jury in New York yesterday. Mr. Trump's lawyers have indicated he will cooperate with the authorities, so no warrant will be put out for his arrest. None the less he that's kind of disappointing we're not even going to put up a fight i want to see like swat teams storming mar-a-lago streamed live on cnn people like abseiling down the building come on america he'll be fingerprinted he'll have his mug shot taken and he'll be read his rights i can't wait for Plus that he- i sorry to stop it again but like i can't wait to see his mug shot somebody else was saying i think on twitch the other day that uh all they really want out of this is to see trump do a perp walk so like he has to be he's jailed or he's he's put in a holding cell for a bit and then he's walked out uh to the courts and obviously remember in prison there's no hair dye there's no there's no tanner there's no orange trump laid bare no makeup what do you think he looks like under all that Judas have been investigating one particular thing, the claims of former porn star Stormy Daniels that she was paid $130,000 to keep quiet about an affair with Trump. The payment itself would have been legal, but he allegedly recorded it as a business expense, which could mean he broke New York law. Mr Trump denies any wrongdoing, and he also denies the affair. This is his response, as reported by the US news channel NBC. So this is a statement from Donald Trump calling this indictment political persecution and election interference at the highest level in history. He goes on to talk about how he has felt uh, essentially aggrieved since the day he came down that golden escalator at trump tower so quit give up then if it's that bad just fucking go home retire stay quiet um, he claims that the the democrats as he put it have done the unthinkable they say indicting a completely innocent person in an act of blatant election interference again his son eric trump had this to say i mean this is these people are evil they're wicked and it's why people have lost trust in the system of the united states of america this is third world tactics they go after donald trump they will do anything to take the man out of the race. They will do anything that they can to imprison the man. They will do anything they can to harass his family, to imprison all of us. They have showed their cards time and time again. It's ex- Eric Trump is a human personification of cat piss. Betty Donald Trump will appear in court to face the charges and enter a plea in New York next Tuesday. But this is likely to be a long, drawn-out legal battle that could last into and even beyond the 2024 presidential election. Republicans are outraged, while Democrats say no one is above the law. We'd love to hear where you stand. Do you welcome the charges, or do you feel America and the world need to move on from Donald Trump and this isn't going to help? Or perhaps you say, look, this is this may be his springboard to to fight and win the next election. Do email really? vine at bbc.co.uk. Please include your phone number so we can call you back. Text us 88291. Let's speak first to Justin Webb, former BBC North America editor and the author of The Gift of a Radio, My, My Childhood and Other Train Wrecks. This is a bit <laughs> of a train wreck, isn't it, Justin? <laughs> That's what he named his book? 
Yeah, nice link, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, it's the breaking of a taboo. That's the thing. So, so put aside all the detail. You've gone through all the detail, and the detail is interesting and relevant and important. But actually, just put put all that to one side. Never in the whole 200-year history of the United States of America have they indicted, uh, in other words, prepared to charge uh, of a, a, a sitting president or a former president. It just has never been done before. And when you think back to American presidents and the things that they have done, not just the things they're accused of doing, the things they actually have done. Think of Nixon. Uh, pardon. Think. Of yeah, it's surprising it's taken this long. Bill Clinton, actually, more recent territory, false testimony. Bill Clinton was just horny. Leave him alone. Under oath, he made an arrangement when he left office that he wouldn't be. And again, I guess Trump was pretty horny. <laughs> prosecuted, etc., etc., etc. Plenty of others have done awful things. They never go down this road. Um, uh, the only sitting president ever to be charged with anything interesting was Ulysses Grant, just after the uh, Civil War, who was charged with a parking, a speeding offence in a, in a horse and carriage, uh, and he huh. paid it off, and, and that was the end of the matter. But when it comes to serious stuff, they just don't do it. And the reason they don't do it, you hinted at, does it take them into a place that many nations are in where you leave office and you've almost got to leave the country because it's so dangerous for you. Do they want to get into that place? And the thinking has always been no until yesterday and this decision. That's why it matters so much. And I, I thought that Trump was basically out of the race for, for 2024 until last night, and I was looking at polling among Republicans, <laughs> and he's shot up to yeah. 50%, and his nearest rival, Ron DeSantis, was on 20 Me Meatball Ron! Before. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, two things to say about that. Number one, it's way, way, way too early, really, to say anything intelligent about who is likely to win the nomination for the Republican. I love that. A, if you're talking about it, you're an idiot. Uh, uh, candidacy. Um, Ron DeSantis isn't even running yet. Um, it wasn't formally declared. So there's plenty, there's plenty of, of room to go. Number two, very partisan Republicans will say, and certainly Trump's supporters will be very loud in the weeks to come, uh, and they believe they have a really good case. And that point about it being political is important because, remember, this isn't, this isn't the Justice Department. This isn't the federal government. This is one state, and it's a state whose judicial process, New York, is entirely controlled by Democrats who are political. So you know, the US system, for better or for worse, is highly political, including the judiciary. These people have run for office. The district attorney is prosecuting him, overseeing the case, boasted during his campaign for office that he had sued Donald Trump uh, more than 100 times during his time in, in the attorney general office, etc. So the That's a pretty, pretty weird and weak flex because it, it's not really made a difference. These people loathe Trump. It's, it's really personal. And when Trump says and when Trump's people say this is the Democrats going after us, it's not just, just talk. It, it, it actually is literally true when it comes to New York. So there's that kind of... Well, yeah, he's the opposition. Isn't that what you're meant to do? ...of side to it. But then there's also the wider side. Do, do Americans really want to elect a president who is facing not just this legal challenge? This is actually the least important of the cases, potential cases, against him. There are two other much more serious sets of charges potentially still to come. Do you want to go into that drama again? I, I, I was out for... Yes, they do. I bet some of them fucking do. They love this shit. Midterm elections last year, and I, talking to Republicans, Trump supporters actually, who regularly said to me, um, you know what, we love Donald Trump, but there's a lot of drama attached with him. If we could find someone else, it might be better. And I, I think that I still might be the rescuing of Ron DeSantis and, and, and do a lot of damage to him. Thank you very much, Justin Webb, former BBC North America editor. His book is The Gift of a Radio. Scott Lucas, professor of US politics at University College Dublin, and Nigel Farage, former leader oh. of UKIP and... This fucking guy. And you've got... What was he? Professor of... Hang on. Professor of US politics at University College... Professor of US politics. So, yeah, probably someone you uh, might want to talk to about it. But Nigel Farage? I just don't think Nigel Farage should be given a platform or anything. But this is where well, this is the BBC, and you've got to have both sides of the argument. But surely it's pretty damaging to have that guy in your corner. <laughs> Dublin and Nigel Farage, former leader of UKIP and the Brexit Party. And Trump dick rider. A friend of Donald Trump, join us. Mr. Farage, you go first. What do you think? And they've just gone for Trump again and again and again. I mean, the liberal left's hatred.
because he keeps breaking the law again and again and again. Of him and, and Justin Webb alluded to that. Their hatred of him led to the Russia inquiry, the Mueller inquiry, the hoax that turned out to come to nothing, two attempted impeachments over Ukraine, all of which, ironically, was to do with President Joe Biden's son and the huge sums of money he was making there. And now this. Um, it is, I think it's quite dangerous, actually. I think there is a worry that uh, there are, you know, Trump supporters who might think, well, we can't trust or believe anything that's going on in our country. At least they don't anyway. They only believe in Trump. It's a cult. Or the, the judiciary. Uh, do we take things into our own hands? I find that slightly worrying. Uh, but I also feel, uh, I also feel that any fair-minded person, we're talking about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in twenty sixteen in a general election campaign, in which about one point six billion dollars were spent. Uh, if this should have been declared, and it wasn't declared in the right way, it is at worst a minor misdemeanor and certainly not a felony. And I think fair-minded people will say, hey, you know what? These Democrats have become really bad people. They've lost objectivity. And I personally believe... I don't think the average person is going to be like, oh, 35, was it $130,000? Just tick the wrong box. Yeah, that happens all the time. I done it just last week. This only makes Trump stronger. What do you think, Scott Lucas, of that? Well, first of all, Jeremy, it's important to have the facts of the case because I don't think Mr. Farage has all of them. Uh, the facts are is that the payoff to Stormy Daniels was not just $130,000. It was a few weeks before the election. It was allegedly falsely recorded as legal expenses. That false recording can be a felony charge, but more importantly, uh, reports are circulating that this is not the only case which will come up in the indictment. We have one report that amongst the felony charges, there could be up to 30. And given that the Manhattan District Attorney's Office has already convicted the Trump Organization over certain business practices, those could come up next Tuesday at the arraignment as well. But secondly, and I'd like to you know, bring this up as the important point, you have the question of the American legal system being allowed to do its job versus the gaslighting, the gaslighting of Mr. Trump and his supporters. This is not a political prosecution. This is not a witch hunt. This is not uh, Alvin. I mean, it is a bit, let's be fair. Like, it is. But also Trump's a monster, so fuck him. Right. Who they try to tear down. This is not the district attorney, the, the prosecutors who they try to tear down, or the jury who they tried to tear down. And now, indeed, they tried to tear down the entire U.S. legal system to save Trump by saying, oh, no, Donald Trump's not the person who should be considered here. He is the victim. We're going to blame others. So let's ask Mr. Farage as a Trump supporter. Do you uphold the American legal system to proceed to this, whether Donald Trump is convicted or whether he's acquitted, or do you continue to try to undermine that legal system, including the implicit well, call you you've made? Got, you've got to get to your count. question mark there. Well, do you ask your question? Well, yeah, well, your question's too long. Get to the bloody point, man. I think the truth is that the, U the U.S. judicial system is undermining itself. Um, it's losing credibility. It looks Evidence? overtly political. Evidence? And I repeat the point. I, I repeat Evidence? the point. Uh, hang on, you know, hang on, I don't know. I don't know of any general election campaign in Britain where there haven't been some items that have been filed wrongly and the Electoral Commission give the parties a slap on the wrist. The point I'm making, this is very, very small beer compared to the overall size of American general elections. And yes, you could argue technically it could be a felony, but it's not, is it? In anybody, any fair-minded person's mind. I think it is. In any fair-minded person's mind. Well, I tell you what, if America wants to destroy you know, itself, it's going the right way about it. This <laughs> looks bent, it looks wrong. And when you think, when you think the President Biden's son... I don't really think that the comment, oh, this is America destroying itself. America is destroying itself in many other ways. This isn't what's going to bring society down. Has earned all these millions from corrupt regimes all over the world, and no one seems to want to raise an eyebrow. And it doesn't look fair. It doesn't look right. It looks biased and overtly political. And I, and I, I you know, okay. I repeat the point. Trump will emerge stronger from this. S S Scott Lucas, if it, looking at it from a distance here, th what they've got is, a, a, so far as we know, it's a payment to Stormy Daniels that that's been filed wrongly, maybe even dishonestly. Now, of all the things that you could throw at Trump in terms of bad behaviour and law-breaking, is that it? Is that the best? What else is there? 
Well, we wait to see the evidence. Well, which well, sure, well you I must have you followed him closely. Come on, you must have an idea of where you sure, think this is which, going. Yeah, I emphasize that because Mr. Fry has not seen the evidence and clearly actually doesn't. I do like the point that some people are making that this payment and this incident that people are like even defenders of defenders of him are like, it's not that bad. It's not even the worst thing he's done. Like, that's not a defense. Know about it, the way that he's deferring. <laughs> Let's talk about what we have. Sorry, you, you, need to, you need to hold off on that laughter to cover up your uh, ignorance there, sir. Let's talk about, first uh, of all, uh, you are... Shots fired. Thank you are Sorry, Mr. Farage, Mr. Mr. Farage, please, Mr. Farage. Sorry, my, my, my turn. My turn. My turn. You had your shot. You had your shot, bro. You had your... This is where... Uh, this is where I just imagine Jeremy Vine being like, oh, God, when they start talking over each other. Shot the range of the syndrome. But I should say, overall, he does a pretty good job at uh, keeping things in line. That's That's what what is. Is. Hang, hang on, Sorry. Scott, Sorry. Scott, if you, if you say Farage is cov- laughing to cover up something, you've got to expect him to reply. So Nigel's replied, Pardon? over to you. And we didn't hear it. <laughs> so what Mr. Farage has done is, first of all, misrepresented the Stormy Daniels case, which is not necessarily misdemeanor by taking it out of the context of when it occurred, the attempt to cover up a sexual affair just weeks before an election because it could affect Donald Trump's chances. And he's omitted the context that the Manhattan District Attorney has already gone through massive amounts of evidence to find the Trump Organization guilty a few months ago of business malpractice, fining the Trump Organization, and sentencing one of its executives to a prison term. He has ignored the fact that there is more evidence which has been brought before the Manhattan District's attorneys, which is going through the next few months, and that there are multiple witness statements. So for him to prejudge this case and to try to undermine the legal system, well, it's not irresponsible because he knows what he's doing. It is that gaslighting that we talked about at the start. Let the system do its work. Okay. Let the election then proceed. I mean, you got to... Are you you still really supporting Donald Trump after everything we've now found out about him? (laughs) Do you know, I supported him over the Russia hoax. I supported him through the Mueller inquiry. I supported him through the impeachments. And you only have to listen to the venom and the hatred of those that are accusing him to understand what is really going on here. It- this is this is what we call projecting when he talks about like, oh, they're they're venomous, or they're they're, such, they're evil people. Like, no, that, that's you, dickhead. Is overtly political. It is unjust, and I do not think the majority of the American public are going to buy this as being fair practice. Okay, thank you both very much indeed, Scott Lucas, and he is a professor of U.S. politics, at University College Dublin. Nigel, <laughs> he's a guy that you know studies this, and it's like his job. And Nigel Farage is a jackass. I don't know what Farage thinks he's ever going to like get from this or any of them really people that uh, you know uh, hitch their wagon to the trump horse he's not going to make you rich the same people that uh, sent Elon musk you are not going to benefit from it farage former leader of the brexit party talking about donald trump whether he's being unfairly prosecuted oh we gotta can't have the music playing zara larson can't tame her we're talking about trump the trump case and what you think about it andy on the Wirral says it's like al capone who for all his misdemeanors was eventually got for tax evasion doesn't matter what they put him away for so long as trump is behind bars the world will be a safer place let's see michael clark in nuneaton you don't agree oh here we go the great british public will get their say no definitely not the world will be a safer place Without Biden and Zelensky and all them other puppets. Well, Zelensky is a puppet for the West and America anyway, the deep state. But look at... Oh, God. So fucking embarrassing. The deep state is... Why is our fucking Alex Jones on? From, I mean, the economy was, the economy was booming. Uh, the world was a safer place. They never launched any wars. I mean, look how corrupt the Bidens, the Clintons and all them are. There's so I mean, much here. Is... Let's, let's bring in another caller to, to see whether he wants to challenge this. Billy in Ayrshire, what do you think? Trump is not the worst by a long way. He is the worst because... He's the worst. The, the one thing that I remember, and this isn't really related to what's going on, but the one thing I do remember is when I was watching him during the COVID pandemic, he said that sanitizer was safe, you could drink it, no bother at all, and the truth, and the truth to that is, sanitizer isn't drinkable. I mean, he said a lot of stupid things. Well, I mean, he did say that they that the scientists should look at the possibility of injecting disinfectant, but that was not a crime. <laughs> Michael Clark. 
No. I can't say anything about that. I've never heard about that one, to be honest. <laughs> have you not heard about that? What? How have you... you no way you haven't heard about that. Well, yeah, but this is serious, right? This guy is accused of an awful lot in terms well, of his business anybody, interests. He? What? He's never killed anybody. He's never killed well, anyone. He's never... <laughs> oh, that's, it's fine then. That's fine. That's yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? That's the only thing you should go to jail for is killing people. Everything else is fine. Fucking moron. Like, that's the defense. Hasn't killed anybody. Jesus Christ. You know, Charles Manson never killed anybody. Can't believe that. That's actually fucking hilarious. <laughs> Your Honor, look. He hasn't physically killed anyone with his bare hands. He's never killed anybody. But look at, look at the state of the American economy and all that. And they're just, it's a, it's a witch hunt. I'll tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is this. This now he's been arrested is going to set a precedent. Because if he gets into power, right, He's going to go after Biden for all their corruption, the Clintons, the Bushes, and all of them. They'll all be brought to book. Yeah, but you hate all them, so what's the problem? They'll probably all be uh, hung for treason. That's well, I, don't, I, I mean, the president isn't Wait, supposed to... What did he say? They'll all be brought to book, and they'll probably all be uh, hung for treason. That's well, why hung for treason? Fucking planet. It's, what the fuck? It's not the 1700s. Does he think it's like a literal witch hunt, like in Salem? This guy, where they dig him up from? I swear to God, right? Last year, or maybe the year before, Lee and I were uh, floating around this this idea we had for a comedy podcast, comedy-based podcast, uh, using characters that we'd made up. And honestly, I swear to God, this is the voice I came up with for one of the characters. He sounds exactly the same. I mean, the president isn't supposed to control the judiciary like that. But, Billy, do you think that that he might get back into power like Michael does? No, I hope he does, not Well, I know you hope he, he does, and that's different. Charged, it should be charged with everything. Everything he's done, he should be charged for. And as far as I'm concerned, all he deserves to do right here, right now, is rot in jail. <laughs> what a joke. Absolute joke. Why well, is know, it a joke, Michael? He's, he's facing like criminal he's, charges. Yeah. Yeah, Michael. And what's he done? Pa paid some woman off or something. What I mean, about the Capitol riot? That wasn't his fault. He told them to go home. Nah, it definitely was, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> he didn't do nothing. Billy, he wasn't his fault. He invited the riots. He invited the Capitol riots. He stood there and basically told them, well, on you go, on you go, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. He is right to do that, it's as far as I'm concerned. Thank I you, mate. Fucking love it. Oh, that was a bit of fun. I might use the uh, Jeremy Vine show as a source more often because it's just, I mean, yeah, we all see TikTok. We know what people are saying on TikTok, but uh, it's good to get sort of uh, an impartial view of things. But <laughs> then you get the, uh, you know, the middle aged, middle class British public chirping in with their ideas it's pretty entertaining and some of them do descend into absolute madness that was pretty tame for uh, some of the stuff i've heard on that show over the last oh god i don't know how long i've been listening to that four or five years on and off but yeah we remain to see what's going to happen with trump i don't think he's going to do any actual jail time i think he'll just get a fine which i've you know rich people just any law where the penalty for breaking that law is a fine, a financial penalty. Is is it even really illegal to rich people? Imagine like a, a parking ticket. How much is a parking ticket these days? Hundred pound? No, I don't want to fork out a hundred pound. That's a lot of money to me. So I'm not gonna park on double yellows or in disabled spots or right in front of a building. You're not allowed to. Imagine if you're a billionaire, park wherever the fuck you want, wouldn't you? Like <laughs> a hundred pound? I don't give a shit. That's why I don't think crimes should come with a financial penalty. You should just go to fucking jail. Or it should be a percentage based on how much you earn. So let's say uh, a parking fine to me is £100. Like, shit, I'm not going to do that again. £100 is a lot of money. But if you're like a billionaire, it should be, pff, what, a couple hundred billion? And you'd fucking think twice about it, wouldn't you? Anyway, that's me done. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and let me know what you think of all this. And I will see you next time.